Hi, welcome. Check it out with Jessica Lee. I'm here with Ed Moderos, who is head of sales training at Clarivate. Hi, Ed. Welcome to the show. Hi, Jessica. Thanks for having me. Yes, I am delighted to talk with you because I know that sales training has been blended up until recently is now completely remote for uh, almost all companies. And you, you've got a thousand sales reps that you actually have um, to help train and enable and onboard and all that for Clarivate. So I wanted to get your take on the shifts in the training and then also some of the insights that you're able to see because Clarivate provides the data analytics and insights for a lot of the healthcare and biotech companies that are working during this COVID-19. So two, two, two topics we want to talk about. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to explain a little bit more about what you do in the company, Ed. So please go ahead. Sure. Let me tell you a little bit about uh, Clarivate. Clarivate is only two years old. Uh, it was a carve out from Thomson Reuters. So they took the scientific business units and the um, intellectual property business units, and they pulled them out and put them together as a stand up, uh, stand, stood them up as a, an organization. Uh, the scientific pieces focuses on researchers that are looking at molecules and compounds, and we work with them all the way till they bring a pharmaceutical drug to market it. And then the back half of the business is around intellectual property, where we work with a lot of pharmaceutical companies, as well as other companies. And we look at how do they research patents and trademarks and protect the things that they, they have through patent and trademark research. And we do it through products, which are databases, and we do it through services from consulting to uh, different on-site services that we provide. So now that you are involved in accelerating those research and development uh, to find solutions, treatments, hopefully vaccines soon and all that, um, I wanted to find out what has been some of the exciting projects that you're able to share with us and how your technology actually helps that process. Yeah, so we have over 100 products on the life science side. And all of the major players that are working on a vaccine are taking advantage of our databases. Uh, I can't do a justification with all the different products we have, but if you wanted to see more, you can certainly see Clarivate on any of the social channels. I know you support about a thousand sales reps globally, and most of your sales are direct. Um, how has that shifted? Because I, I, obviously everybody's doing online training, but what has the shift been like for you exactly? What is the program now that you're doing online training? Yeah, my group is responsible for the onboarding, uh, the continuing education, and even the management training. So the first thing we saw was, uh, you know, we had a vast majority of our salespeople were in the field, and we've got 98% of our organization now working from home. So we had a lot of focus on uh, what's the right technologies. You know, a lot of these guys that were in the field just weren't used to using Zoom or WebEx or, or Microsoft Teams, and we had to get familiar with the technologies. Second piece is they had to start to um, really shift some of their sales skills and focus more on front-end things of how they're going to prepare for a call, get even more educated about organizations, and then get better at prospecting around specific things that we could help. And then finally, when they got into those meetings, asking better questions and focusing their content better that they wanted to share. A lot of times these meetings would tend to be quicker uh, than you would have on onsite. So they, they had to get uh, a lot more crisp at that whole sales process and doing, and doing those things. Then from the delivery standpoint, there, there's a lot of changes going on. We had a blended program where we were doing virtual and onsite and, and now it's fully virtual. So the focus now is finding the right tools that can empower that. And we use a WebEx training center to, to drive that with a lot of it. And we've been able to mimic a lot of the workshops, uh, a lot of the interactions that we did through, through the different tools that are available. And all the content that you're creating, there's the more demand probably for you to create these interactive small bite-sized content. Uh, feeding them more relevant stories to address the immediate pain points of the prospects, possibly? Yeah, we had to look at all of our content and work in a lot more interaction. You can get away and read the room a lot more in person. Online, you know, if you're going through a couple slides, it's easy to hide. They, they, there's a stat, I think it's 85, 86% of people really will open up another application and look at it. 
So you really need to keep people involved, uh, make it actionable about their accounts, what they're doing today, and, and make it participative. So you're calling them out, having them participate what's going on. Otherwise, you'll lose them really quick. Yeah, you talk about instead of thinking about revenue generation, it should be more content generation at this stage. Yeah, I, I think of that. When I look at the, the salespeople and some of the approaches that I see, even, even coming to me, it's very quickly people get to, hey, you should buy my stuff. And I think today we have to have a, a, some sensitivity and empathy of how we approach that. So if, if you can't really find a problem that you can solve, and it might have shifted, but you've got to do homework and find a problem that you can solve and become more valuable to your, your prospects and clients. And I think you can do that by providing content um, and become a content generator. Uh, and if you think about that, everybody's in an uncharted times where there's no book to how to get through this. So I know myself, I'm wondering, what are my peers doing? How are they getting through it? And I think salespeople sometimes miss that they have the insight of talking to all of the colleagues and peers of the people that they're calling on. So sharing that perspective and how are other people approaching this? What are their challenges? How have they shifted their priorities? How have their strategy shifted? That's pretty valuable. And I think we could lean on that a lot more than we do. I think prospects are also doing a lot of online learning on their own. Uh, and so the content that you create for your sales team is often content that prospects would also like to see. As I'm wondering if you're exposing some of that content that you provide to the public for consumption as they're learning. Yeah, and that's been a shift we've been seeing for a long time of, we think that's, you know, a prospect comes in and maybe they don't know much about us, but we're, prospects are much more educated than they used to be because of the amount of information they can get hold of. Mm -hmm. With Clarivate, we have uh, prospect, a lot of prospect facing information, especially today. And our, some of our prospects come in pretty well educated about what we do and who we are. Yeah, and I, and I feel like right now with online training uh, shifting to doing in small groups, uh, you got to have the right tools to enable the large classes and then also small classes and for make it seem as if you are on site doing small training like before, but virtually. Yeah, you that's, that's, that's a great point. Probably one of the hardest things to replicate are those workshops and pieces uh, that really, you know, don't allow you to hide in the big groups. And that WebEx training center that I mentioned earlier, has been a great tool for us to, to work with that. It has the ability to create breakout groups where you can, if you had 100 people on the call, you can preset groups, break them out into 10 groups, have leaders in those groups, and it's at a push of a button. You can pull them back in, you can do polling, you can do whiteboard and, and charts. So there's a lot of different ways you can get people involved in the training. The only thing I would say is, you know, if you were, it was easy to navigate and run and facilitate on site with one person, it's really good to have a couple people or at least one other person to help you facilitate with the breakout groups and run the technology, compile questions, do the breakouts where the other person is facilitating or just focusing on the content. So you're, you're learning what works and what doesn't work. Sounds like uh, certain things probably don't work so well. Do you want to share that lessons learned? Well, yeah, that was one of the biggies was you can't do it all yourself. So you have to pull somebody else into it. Uh, the other piece is I could get away with a lot longer on site because uh, you can do breaks and series, but I think there's a saturation point when you do it online. Mm -hmm. So you have to try and limit yourself to, uh, to the amount of time that you're pulling people out. And I would say if we could do a good half day training on site, uh, probably about an hour and a half, two hours, I think is pushing it. So really, you know, work in breaks, gives people some time to go back, do their day to day job, if that's it, and try and keep your sessions uh, no longer than they have to be to get the point across that you want to be. Shorter is better in this world. Do you feel that some of the exercises you're doing now and the infrastructure, the tools will remain um, as part of your program even after the COVID-19 is over? Yeah, I do. I, that's, that's a great question because I think we're learning and it accelerated uh, using some of these tools, doing things uh, more virtually. And we're learning that it can be done and it can be done pretty effectively. So I think not only will we see it on the training side where we do more virtually, I think we'll even see it when we move back to the offices that we can run our business pretty well from home. 
we miss collaborating. We need to get together as a group to collaborate. But you might see less, uh, less having a desk in the office and maybe more of a hot desk or a collaboration area. Um, because I, I think for us specifically, um, we've been doing pretty well with, with driving our business uh, in offsite locations. Do you see any um, additional projects that you would actually put in place during this time that? <laughs> uh, well, we're, we're a newer company, so there's still projects every day and there are more projects and more priorities than we can get to. The um, biggest thing, and are you talking about, would you say projects related to some of the changes that we've seen or? Yeah, I'm wondering because, uh, now that you were shifting to 100% remote online training uh, and some things work well and some things don't, are there any innovation, any additional initiatives that you're gonna take to do, be more effective? I would say from a strategy per per perspective, no. We were kind of staying with what we, we wanted to do. Some of our priorities and projects we've had to kind of thin out um, because it's a little longer. If we can't deliver courses as long, they take a little longer to deliver. We're making sure it really stuck. We're uh, doing a lot more education with the sales managers to make sure they're reinforcing these things. So I could say we probably, our timeline has gotten a little bit longer, but I don't think our priorities have focused or will make any other big investments uh, outside of what we planned on. Well, a lot of people are doing that, um, not only training them, but allowing them to take quizzes or allowing them to share best practices. Maybe you have uh, one champion who is very good at certain pitch to then do the pitch and then have others try to copy and get scored on their performance. That's a way to share the learning. Yeah, that is, and that's always been part of what we do. I think people uh, learn best from their peers and people in the field are, are a great asset. So we work that into our, a lot of our programs. One of the new technologies uh, that we've, we've kind of steered toward is a new LMS system uh, that has that ability to, to do some uh, kind of teach back. So mm -hmm. if you go through something, you can record it. It allows for a little easier uh, distance viewing of it. You can have more people judging it, taking a look at it. We always work in um, some of our, our key performers into our training sessions to show what good looks like and how they do it. And, and a lot of the work that we talk about is um, how do you take the concepts in and make it my own or really adopt them to, to what you do. And it, I, I think it's a great practice if you can pull those, uh, those either leaders or, or senior salespeople in that do it really well as a, a guide to, to set the pace. And since you have such a large sales force of a thousand folks uh, and you have your own data analytics tool, I'm wondering, are you actually using your technology to do any of the analysis uh, and um, like recommendations or automations? I think I touched on this earlier, but now more than ever, um, taking the time to fully prepare and using anything like that. That gives us a little bit of a competitive advantage. Mm. So it's something we highly recommend is, is to go in and understand who the company is. What are those critical priorities that they focus on at every level? How do they cascade through the organization? And using different tools from, from our, our internal, uh, internal sites and, and access that we have to even things like public Googling, uh, LinkedIn obviously, and uh, public filings are another great source where you can start to understand what is this company focused on? What's their strategy? How are they performing against that? Um, that's a, a concept, we call it slowing down to speed up. But if you really take the time to understand that stuff internally or externally, you can become uh, much more pinpointed with your approach and really tap into value more with your customers. Overall, I mean, I'm hearing that a lot of companies are putting their purchases on hold because of the uncertainty, they're not moving forward. And you're finding that's the case too, except in the science and um, healthcare research, that area, they're actually investing more, right? Yeah, there's, there's definitely some bright spots um, where we'll see more investments. And you, and you see it, some of the organizations out there, um, few are, are actually, their stocks performing really well, they're doing very well. And I think that shines a big light on um, how we need to prepare more as we go into this. Uh, you are come across really lacking sensitivity and empathy if you don't have that targeted approach and you're just kind of blanketing or doing canvassing of your prospecting. 
Uh, and that's even with your customers. Um, you probably have a good understanding of what they're focusing on and what's good and what their priorities are. But a lot of that shifts, especially with what's happened to them. So you can't make any assumptions. Um, I find now the work that you put in on the front end pays dividends on the back end. And uh, then you have to confirm all that with everything that you find. You, you, there are hypotheses to you really confirm them with the customers. Thank you so much, Ed, for sharing the insights that you're seeing in your industry and some of the best practices that um, you're actually learning right now as we're doing this online training 100% globally now. So I appreciate you being on the show. Thanks for having me. It was great to talk to you today. There you have it. Take it up with Jessica Lee at Maderos from Clarivate. Thank you.